Hey everybody, hope all is well. My name is Jamie Fenn, and today I'm gonna show you how to do this door open masking transition in DaVinci Resolve. I'm also gonna teach you guys how to do some of my own personal favorite tips and tricks for doing masking transitions. All right, let's get started. So what I have here are two clips. One is me walking through this door and the other one is me walking towards this mountain range. And I actually look down, it kind of sells the effect and then I look back up and show you guys the mountains. One quick thing I did here on this clip is when I opened the door, I actually did some speed ramping. So if you actually look, if you right click on the clip and do retime controls, you can speed ramp. I have a speed ramping tutorial. If you want to check it out, I'll link it above. But I just did a little bit of speed ramping right here. I just made it like a quick door open. That's just a quick little tip before we get started. Okay, next what you want to do is take the mountain clip that you have or whatever clip you're gonna to transition to and make sure it's the same length as the clip underneath it. Highlight both those clips, right click and select new fusion clip. Put the playhead over this clip and click on fusion. So up here we have two viewer windows. If you want just one, you can click on the icon here and that will make the viewer window that you select the main viewer window if you just want one or two. If you wanna figure out what node is what you can drag the node up into that viewer window and figure out what is what so i know this top one is the door so i'm going to rename it door and the one underneath it is obviously the mountains so just to clarify this merge node real quick you want to put the door on the top and you want to put the mountains underneath so you want the door to be the foreground now the yellow arrow is the background and the green is the foreground. So we want to put the door on the foreground and then we want to put the mountains on the background. Now I have the media out in viewer window number two and I'm just going to make this one viewer by clicking on that icon and now we see the final composition as we go through this tutorial. The next thing we want to do is click on the door node and add a polygon tool. So come over here to polygon and just click on it. That will automatically connect it to the door node. And we wanna come over here to the inspector and click on invert. Next, I'm gonna use my arrow keys and I'm going to go up to the point where I open the door and just the first frame is where I'm going to stop of when the door starts to show through to the other side. We don't wanna go here because there's nothing showing. So just one frame in and you can see there's a little crack and what I'm going to do is select a rectangle and I'm going to match it right up to the edge of the door. I'm matching it up to the inside of this point of the door and I'm matching it up to the outside of this part of the door. The next thing we want to do is just move forward on our timeline with the arrow keys on our keyboard and just go a few frames. I'm gonna do three. And slowly just drag the points to stay at the same points that we first masked. And by default, this will automatically record. So there's no keyframing that we have to do. This is, it'll just automatically keyframe once we start to drag and place these points where we want them. So now, as you can see, I can move backwards on my keyboard using the arrow keys and show you how that's happening. So now what we wanna do is mask this clip all the way until the end, until you make it all the way through the door. But here's a problem. Now we have the door handle right here and there's the edge of the door, but now the door handle is actually cut off. So all you have to do is in the middle of your keyframing, you can just select points. So just double click, double click, and you can adjust your keyframing however you like as far as these points. And what that'll do is it'll actually create points and it will slowly fade into that. But if you want to, you can just make fine adjustments on the frames before. It won't really make a difference because what we're gonna do is add some blurring to this. So as you go through the keyframes, just slowly match it up and then continue to the end of the clip. 
Here's a little quick tip. If you actually highlight the points that you want to move, you can highlight all of them. Just make sure you select one of the actual points and not one of these fades. And you can just actually click and drag all of the points that you selected so you don't have to move each one individually. All right, so once you've masked this entire door transition to the point where you make it all the way through the door, the next thing we want to do so it doesn't look kind of fake is we want to sell it by adding some motion blur. So if you select the polygon tool and come over here to the inspector, on this third icon over here at the top, click on it and there's an option for motion blur. Click on motion blur. Now as you can see by default, these settings are kind of not the greatest because you can see legitimately like the layers of what's happening. So what I like to do, at least for this specific situation, is crank the quality up to about 10. You could probably type in a number higher than that and put in 12 if you like, but you can adjust it to however you'd like. Obviously, like these lower numbers are not going to look great, but the higher you go, the smoother it will actually look. Whatever works for you. Also, you can mess with your shutter angle and center bias. That just means it. if you, you know, click and drag this up, you can adjust how much motion blur is affecting those edges that you just masked out. So if we actually go to the very beginning of where we start our masking, we run into a problem where the masking actually just kind of sticks here and it just constantly shows like this sliver through the door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my arrow keys and go right up until the point of where the first keyframe was made for our masking. And I'm going to go one keyframe back and I'm going to keyframe by clicking on the keyframe button next to the border width. And I want to turn the border width down. So now as I move forward on the clip, the border width is now to zero and the masking is not affecting the clip until we actually need it to be in full effect. The next thing I did was I added some rays, some like light rays to the background, well actually to the whole image, but it looks like it's coming through the door. And what's really cool about that is that it kind of adds depth to the shot. So I'm going to come down here to the merge node and I'm going to hold down shift and press spacebar and type in rays. You can do light rays or you can just do the normal rays. I'm just going to do normal rays and I'm going to do some keyframing for these as well. So I want to kind of go backwards and I want to adjust it so these like light rays aren't coming off the highlights here. I just want them to come underneath the door for the first part of the shot. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip and turn the threshold up a little bit until the point where it's just shining through the door underneath. And go up into the point of where I open the door. I'm gonna click on the keyframe of the threshold. And as I open the door, I'm gonna turn the threshold back down. So it kind of like peeks through the door, which is kind of cool, you know? It, it kind of blends these two clips together and really ties them together to show a lot of depth for the light rays coming through. And as I step through the door, I want to turn the threshold up. So it kind of gets rid of the rays. Also, I want to adjust the center of what's happening for these light rays. I want to make them coming out of the sun. So I'm going to go to the point where I'm almost opening the door. And I'm going to adjust the X and Y. And just put it right like that. And then when I step through the door, the threshold will be all the way up. And then... What I'm going to do is also keyframe some blending. So I'm just going to click on the blend tool and go a few frames forward after I come through the door and turn the blend down. So now this is what we have. Then what I did next is I came up to my effects library and clicked on effects and dragged an adjustment clip on top of the composition that we have here. And what's nice about this is that you can now just make any adjustments to this adjustment layer and not affect anything else in your whole video. So what I did is I came over to the color tab. Now with the adjustment clip selected, now you can make adjustments here in the color tab to do whatever you want. So for example, I'm going to put on one of my LUTs. And the last thing I did was put black bars here to make it look a little bit more cinematic. I kind of got a few comments in my last video that you can just come up here to timeline and put on output blinking. And I totally understand that works and I am fully aware that that's how you can do this type of cropping ratio. But if you do it like this, then it goes over your entire timeline. So if you want to adjust just black bars for this specific clip, you can come in here and crop 140 
and 140. And I did a tutorial on how to animate these, so if you want to bring them in nice and slowly, you can. And there's a link right here above if you want to check out that video. And that's a tutorial on how to bring these in nice and slowly or make them disappear. If you want to see more videos like this, please comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you in my next video.